Hello, Tuesday, United States of America ish. Well, Prague Cap, Cullen Roche. QE involves swapping reserves for bonds. QE involves swapping reserves for bonds. We know this, A. Eh? Which results in no change in the private sector's net financial assets. They used to have bonds, now they got cash. It merely changes the composition of the assets. The composition, they used to have bonds, now they've got cash. If they really wanted bonds, they can use the cash to buy the bonds again. OK. Two, monetization of the debt implies that there is not enough demand. We'll leave out number two. Um, Cullen says, so I was extremely pleased to see Bernanke say the following this morning, which is causing a lot of trouble in the economic blogosphere. By buying securities, no, oh, hang on, I've got to do my um, Ben Bernanke. Um, bye, 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 buying securities. I uh, no, that's the question. <laughs> Can't do it because that's only the question to him. By Congress, by buying securities, are you monetizing the debt, printing money for the government to use, and will that inevitably lead to higher inflation? And this is Ben Bernanke. No. That's not what's happening, and that will not happen. Um, and then goes on to say what monetizing the debt means, and he'll say what Cullen Roche says it is, which involves swapping reserves for bonds, which results in no change in the private sector's net financial assets. It merely changes the composition of assets. So a lot of people calling Bernanke a lying bath steward. Um, he's not lying yet. Um, they may one day really genuinely monetize the debt, but they're not yet. And interesting, the ECB, when they say that they're going to buy periphery debt, if the periphery apply to Brussels for... It's funny, OK. What, what, what's got to happen? Say Spain, who, who's apparently being put off by Germany, saying not yet, but... Spain's going to want, the government is going to want more money. It's got to apply to Brussels, to the EU, for um, apply. And when they, that application goes in, then the, there's a, things that happen that people go to wherever the application came from and tell them that they've got to do this, this, this and this, austerity-wise. Uh, this is why Spain's just passed a huge austerity budget, so when the people come, they won't even have to bother coming because Spain's already done it, right? Um, the money that they can borrow will probably come from um, the EFSF or the ESM, yeah, the, the bailout funds, and when that's happened, then the European Central Bank will start buying their debt as well, um, their bonds. It's, it's all a bit contrived and whatever, but it's, it's, it's in a way not a bad idea, if you like that sort of thing. But it's really all hoping that things will come right in the end, and then everybody will be paid back. It's a big bet, but obviously it's a bet they've got to take. Right, uh, we weren't doing that at all. Anyway, this is from Paul Lee Krugman in the New York Times and the end of his last article. But the same thing applies to public policy in response to depression. In the seemingly opposite direction, this is about printing money. That's the, this and then we'll get the opposite direction. The Great Depression taught policymakers the hard way that tight money and fiscal austerity were really bad ideas in the face of a deeply depressed economy but several generations on all that was forgotten except by the economic historians and policy makers were ready to resurrect the treasury view get all worked up about the danger of inflation despite the absence of actual inflation and in general to repeat their grandfather's mistakes in full. There have been a fair number of finance types saying things like government stimulus is heroin 
actually they're wrong. It's austerity in the face of depression that's just like heroin, a dangerous drug that re resurfaces at intervals because the next generation has forgotten the damage it does. I shall move on. This is from Gas Buddy, is it called? Um, gas prices in California. If you go to 22 Vista Point Drive and Tioga Pass or Olympic and Fairfax, you're paying four ninety nine a gallon at the pump there. Yow. Over in Europe, Ford, the motor manufacturer, says European dealers selling vehicles to themselves. Ford Motor Company losing market share in Europe this year is boosting sales in the troubled region through self-registrations in which dealers sell cars to themselves without having customer orders. The practice has become widespread in Europe and accounted for 30% of industry registrations in Germany in the first eight months of the year. Uh, dealers eventually sell the cars as used vehicles at big discounts. It's a very aggressive environment and until either demand picks up or capacity is adjusted to the situation it's unlikely to change. You have to live with the realities of the industry. Sounds all a bit odd to me <laughs> but I suppose if people they're just pumping cars over um, the, they've got to do something with them so they do something silly with them. Finish with this island's emigration highest for 25 years outside Croke Park Stadium in the centre of Dublin a day before the All-Ireland Hurling Final. Young people are queuing up to get inside. They aren't seeking tickets, however. Instead, they are attending a jobs expo where most hope to secure a position with a foreign company and leave the country. Virtually all my friends have left to find work. Some are in New York, uh, Toronto, Australia or London, says Tommy Flynn, a 24-year-old civil engineer graduate who can't find job at home. We sent out about 60 CVs in Ireland and got very few replies. I might try Canada, he says. The latest emigration data provide a stark reflection of the economic crisis facing Ireland. A record 87,000 people left the country in the year to April, up from 80,600 a year earlier. That's it. Bye.